What's Up Journey here with Dr. Cassetta today. He has been a friend to me, a friend to our Journey community, a friend to the Elmira community at large. Speaking of community, he's wearing his Lover Fighter 5K, uh, the Lover Fighter shirts that were made in honor of Brennan McCarthy. Uh, that was another time when our community was Journey Strong and pulled together for such an important cause. I remember those uh, ice bucket challenges that we did together. And, that was uh, awesome. That was yeah. awesome. Dr. Cassetta, what have you been up to? What have you been up to? Tell us what's going on with this COVID-19, this coronavirus. Uh, you know, what's been happening with you? Well, we, we're, we've been isolating like everybody else, but still working. Uh, you know, we, we have never seen anything like this, and I'm sure that we never expected to see anything like this. And, and so now is the time for us to um, pull together, use our resources wisely, and just be grateful for what we have and, and work together. And there's no time, this is not a time for finger pointing, but to work together and help each other to get through this. And we will get through this. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I, we're, we're here at home this week and I'm, I'm very grateful to have my wife, my children, my grandchildren, everyone's doing well. I have a nephew that's a hospital doctor in New York City and Almost every patient that he, well, every patient that he sees has uh, COVID-19, every single one in the hospital. It's just a matter of how sick they are. And he became ill about three weeks ago, and he had to take a, two weeks at home. And basically, after 10 days, he was without fever, and he called and he said, I want to go back to work. They said, get in here. They said, uh, you know, someone like you has already been sick, hopefully won't get sick again. Uh, we're not 100% sure of that, but we're thinking that's the way it is. So he's doing better and, and he's back at work. And in New York City where he's working at one of the big hospitals, he tells me that's private rooms, usually one patient per room. And right now they have four patients per room. And most of those people are in recliners. They don't even have beds for them. Wow. So, so the stories that you're, you're seeing in the media, you know, there's a lot of things going around, but that's what uh, I heard from my nephew. Wow. So, so as far as what's going on here, you, you sent me an invitation to be in your, your fit buddy challenge. And I said to myself, you know what, I'm doing my best not to become a fat buddy. <laughs> so, so when the, when the weather permits, Christina and I get out for a walk with a Scotty dog and you know, we have seen more people out walking than ever before. Um, and we're trying to use your on-demand workouts and the Zoom workouts that you've provided. And, and that's just a great way for us to try to stay in shape. So this week I worked from home. Our office has been split into teams so that, you know, if one person gets sick and everyone else has to go into uh, quarantine, then that won't take the whole office out. And I've been telling my patients, well, you know, I've been telling my patients all along, there's nothing I can do, nothing I can prescribe that equals the benefits of a healthy lifestyle, uh, diet, exercise, and sleep to uh, boost our immune systems and to maintain uh, mental and physical health. And, you know, many people that I'm talking with lately doing virtual visits from home tell me they have trouble sleeping. So, you know, I mean, I just thought I'd go over a few tips, what we can do to maintain good sleep hygiene. Oh, yeah, that, that would be very helpful. You know, uh, we want to talk to you today about just things that people can do to keep their immune system strong. I think that that's an important thing for us to do. Also, I, I think it's remarkable when you mentioned that it's like nothing that we've ever seen. You've been a medical doctor for 33 years, for 33 years, you know, 33 years over at the uh, Guthrie you know, right here locally. So for you to make that statement, I mean, that's wow. 33 years worth of experience. So I just wanted to say thank you for what you're doing every day. Uh, thank you for what your nephew's doing. I'm sure that that was a scary time. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. For him to come down uh, with the COVID-19. And, uh, you know, I mean, what are you going to do? You don't know. Uh, sure, the older population has had it worse, but there's been some younger statistics as well. So it's, uh, it's just important. So, uh, so thank you for being on the front lines and, and tell us what we can do to keep our immune system strong, starting off with sleep. Uh, you already talked a little bit about exercising and, and eating well, but uh, yeah, tell us about that if you could. Well, you know, we've always, I've always talked about sleep with my patients and, and sleep apnea. 
And so if, if anybody has a concern about sleep apnea right now, we're kind of limited as what we can do, but I know you can order some mouthpieces online. This might be a time to give one of those a try. And maybe you could get Dr. Dunn on to talk a little bit more about this on one of his presentations. He does a great job with that. Great idea, great idea. Let me, let me throw some other ideas out there. Uh, you should only sleep long enough until you feel rested and then get out of bed. And try to go to bed and get up about the same time every day. And there's, you really can't force yourself to get to sleep. If you can't sleep, get out of bed and then try again. So you should avoid caffeine except early in the day and alcohol really doesn't help your sleep. Um, keep your bedroom dark, cool, quiet and, and free of anything that reminds you about work or stress, just keep it out of the bedroom. And try to exercise several days of the week but not a good idea to be, do that just before you go to bed. And the other thing that really, since we're all just living a virtual life these days, just avoid looking at your devices before you go to bed. Anything that gives off light, that can make that harder to fall asleep. So. Oh, that's really good. Setting your room up. Uh, I've heard a lot about, you know, reducing blue lights and things such as that in your room, right? So maybe even charge your phone in the kitchen or something instead of next to your bed or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Keep, keep the devices out of the bedroom if you can. Okay. So next week I have to go back to the office and, and see patients, but uh, we're going to be practicing professional and social distancing as much as we can. And what we've done is we've limited our routine appointments and we're just seeing those people that have an urgent need that we can't really meet online. Mm -hmm. And we're offering the virtual visits and this has really worked quite well. We have a couple of platforms that we're working on. One is, one is called Guthrie Now and one is eGuthrie Virtual Visits. And patients seem very relieved that, you know, I can they can see me, I can see them, and I can see all their chart and their meds, and I can order things for them, and I can decide if there's enough need for them to either go to the emergency department or come to the office. And, you know, I think all of my colleagues in whatever group they're in are doing virtual visits, and, and it's a great thing. It's really yeah. a great thing. You know, it seems like this, this uh, pandemic has really caused not just, <laughs> of course, us as a fitness industry, if you told me a few weeks ago that I would be on zoom so much carrying out group sessions i never would have believed it but uh it's it's caused us to step into the future uh i mean i will this be something that the guthrie would continue afterwards to make it uh easier for patients to you know consult with their doctor we've been doing this right along but we haven't really made it a big part of our practice but the thing that has really helped us jump into this is the fact that insurance companies i have to give them credit very early in this, they said, hey, we're going to bring down the barriers so you can do this type of a virtual visit. We want to keep those people home as much as possible. So they have, uh, a lot of the companies have waived copays, and so they they're taking the barriers away that might have been in there for the patients to do a virtual visit. Mm -hmm. And also, I can, I can connect with a patient if they have an iPhone or, not, or an iPad or a laptop or even an Android, they can do a virtual visit. Okay. So an important question that I have for you uh, with the people that you're consulting with and, and whatnot, of course, not with any names, but how widespread is this uh, in our community? Uh, I, I keep up to date with the Shimon County Department of Mental Hygiene. And while I'm on that topic, I want to tell you that we have in Shimon County, we have a superstar Department of Mental Hygiene. Um, I've been working with them for the last couple of years. Uh, and we, in our county, we're very fortunate to have the people that we have and the services that we have in our Department of Mental Hygiene and our, our uh, county health department. So we, we really are way ahead of everybody else as far as health departments in New York State. As of this morning, I looked at the numbers. Um, 25 patients are positive in our county out of 460 tests, which works out to about 5%. And Remember, most of those people that were tested had symptoms. So there's a lot, there are a lot of people out there with either minor symptoms that don't get tested or no symptoms at all. And most of the people that have symptoms, as you know, have uh, concerns about cough, fever, shortness of breath, and chest pain. But lately we're learning more that 
people can present with unusual symptoms. Even some doctors that I've heard from, uh, just heard from a doctor yesterday that presented with a, a red eye, conjunctivitis was his main symptom to start with. We've heard about people that have a loss of their sense of smell. And some people come in with uh, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain as a presenting symptom. Mm -hmm. So this is a highly contagious disease and we know that there are asymptomatic carriers that can transmit the disease to other people. And I told you the number of people in our county, 25 positive tests, but we know there's a lot more people out there that are positive. So really everyone should kind of assume that if they see someone else on the street in the store, that that person could potentially be an asymptomatic carrier. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's the way we need to behave. That uh, everyone could be an asymptomatic carrier. So we do have some, some testing available, but the testing is only for patients with fever, cough, chest pain, shortness of breath, and symptoms. And you can call whatever medical facility you go to and they'll tell you whether you meet the criteria to be tested. Um, right now, Shimon County Health Department and everyone is working to make testing more available. The emphasis is on getting a rapid, reliable test that can be self-administered. And the reason why that's so important, right now, if you go to get tested, even if it's a drive-through test, a person has to have PPE on, a complete suit from, from head to toe with a mask and, uh, you know, the, the uh, N95 and the, the gown, the gloves, everything. And all of that stuff has to be thrown out after each person. Wow. So what we really need is this test that can be self-administered and it preferably just a nasal swab rather than the one that's going all the way to the back of your nose, which the way it's done now. And there is a, a test that's been approved and it, it's, it's called the Abbott ID now. Mm -hmm. And fortunately we have 18,000 of those machines already in widespread use doing strep tests and uh, flu tests. The holdup is, 50,000 test cartridges can be produced every day. We need way more than that. So the demand of those tests on the test cartridges is way more than what they can supply. And we don't even have one of those machines locally that I know of. So it's coming, but it's not here yet. The next thing that we need is this antibody test. Okay, so the, the rapid test is to say, are you infected? Mm -hmm. The antibody test, which would be an IgG test would tell us if someone has immunity. And the belief is that once this IgG antibody becomes positive, immunity has developed and that person is no longer contagious and can go back to work mm -hmm. taking care of patients without concern that they're gonna contract the disease or spread the disease. And then the next test beyond that is create a vaccine to protect us from future outbreaks. Okay, so that, um the test that just basically determines that somebody has this immunity, uh, that's based on the belief that if you've had it and overcome it, that you would then be immune to it, right? Correct, and that's, that's kind of the same thing that the vaccine would do. The mm -hmm. vaccine would stimulate production of antibodies. It would almost simulate an infection. Mm -hmm. um, that's the way our current vaccines work. So, so what are we telling people? Distance, stay at home, that's your best defense. If you go out, practice social distancing, good hand hygiene, and it's reasonable to wear a mask, even, even a homemade mask, even, even one of these, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and the CDC finally came out yesterday and said, hey, maybe everybody should wear a mask. And the belief is that wearing a mask will protect others if if I'm an asymptomatic carrier, this will protect others from me spreading the disease to them. So I wear this to protect you and you wear it to protect me. Yes. And please save those surgical masks and the N95 for the medical professionals and the first responders. Ah, uh, boy, that's a great concept too. Not just wearing the mask to protect yourself, but wearing the mask to protect others in case you're an asymptomatic carrier. Mm -hmm. What do you think about the gloves that people are wearing in public? Because, I mean, I think that you would actually need to be very cautious about how you would take those gloves off 
if the gloves were going to do you any good, right? Because if you're touching surfaces with the gloves and then you're still touching your face with the gloves and then later you use your hands to take off the gloves. You know, can you talk a little bit about the people that are walking around with gloves and if you're going to use gloves, maybe how you should use them? Um, you know, because I, I see some problems with that, you know, as I just described. You no, know, maybe, the, maybe the best thing about gloves is that it's going to remind you not to touch your face. Okay. I mean, you know, if you go to, let's say you go to Wegmans and you you sanitize the handle and you sanitize your hands. I mean, you're going to be touching a lot of things. Yeah, if you, if, you, if you have gloves and you can wear the gloves, you're going to have to remember to take them off. And there's a proper way to take gloves off. And you can, you can look that up if you're curious. So you don't spread any, any disease. But, you know, again, we're, we're facing a time when gloves could be relatively uh, scarce. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I think if you really want to use gloves and you have access to them and, and you need them to protect yourself, it's okay. But certainly the hand washing frequently and don't touch your face and maintain your distance, it, those are the most important things. Now, you, you mentioned a few symptoms earlier, and uh, I, I know that you're very busy right now, so I'll only take a little bit more of your time, but uh, you mentioned a few symptoms earlier, and I think that everybody right now that like gets a sniffle is like, oh no, you know, am I coming down with like the coronavirus? And that wasn't, the, that wasn't one of the symptoms that you described. You described yeah. a, a cough, you described a fever, you did describe though that somebody nauseous and vomiting, uh, so it presented in a variety of ways, but... Uh, what are your thoughts? If somebody wakes up tomorrow and is like, well, I'm feeling a little congested or, uh, you know, congested nasally or, you know, because this is that time of year when you might. It's a change of season. It's, uh, there's a lot going on, you know. I, I got to give you credit, Travis. You picked up on that. You're paying attention. You picked up on it. You're, you're sharp, man. You're sharp. <laughs> but, you know, this is a moving target. What, what was true yesterday might not be true tomorrow. But the last time I heard about this, that a runny nose, probably not coronavirus, okay? But if you have other symptoms, loss of smell might be. You know, the other thing that really jumps out at me is that when I talk to somebody, I ask them, did you ever feel like this before? And, and the people that I have talked to that have been tested positive, they almost universally tell me, hey, I've never felt like this before. So if you get sick, and you have questionable symptoms, but if you say, if you can really say, wow, I never felt like this before, and you have some of those symptoms we talked about, I'd be a little more concerned. On the other hand, I just talked to a lady yesterday who says, hey, I'm having some trouble breathing. And I'm like, wow, that makes me very concerned. She says, hey, I have asthma. This time of the year, I always have trouble breathing. I said, okay, that puts it in perspective. So make sure you, you stay vigilant and watch for the other symptoms. Or if you feel like, hey, this is, I'm not doing well, or if you're getting worse, let's get you tested. So you got to really use your judgment on, on some of these symptoms. Yeah, so I, I guess that's a great litmus test right there. Like, do I recognize this? Uh, do I recognize this feeling, you know, because some people do have that uh, recurring colds or whatever that they get. And if it feels like a normal cold, it could be. However, if you start to get a a dry cough, uh, trouble breathing, a fever, uh, you know, and you're feeling uh, like, well, this doesn't normally come with my cold. Uh, let's talk about it. Let's get it tested then, right? Well, and I, I think anybody that has symptoms until you're really sure, the safest thing is to, is to really stay isolated for a while. You know, what I'm hoping is that those will have more widespread testing in the near future so that somebody with some symptoms that they're concerned about could come and get tested easily and quickly through a drive-through test or a self-administered test, something like that. So I think we're, we're gonna get there soon, but we're not there yet. Okay, all right, so speaking of where we're not to, yeah, like we're, we're still, we have many shutdowns. Uh, you know, we uh, are being told to stay at home and basically self-quarantine. You're on the front lines. Do you have any predictions, any predictions as far as Maybe when we'll see a peak, maybe we'll start to get on the better side of things. <laughs> you got your tongue out. <laughs> I love it. Staying journey strong right there at the office <laughs> or wherever you are. You're, I love your virtual background today. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you to speak to two things. Tell me about your virtual background 
because it's like I get to interview you in front of the Golden Gate right here. And then uh, tell me, uh, tell me if you, you see a timeline on this, uh, you know, a little, yeah. little thoughts for our community. Uh, you know, maybe well, the, the virtual background is, is probably a lot more interesting than what you would see if you, you saw where it was. Although I have to thank my wife because I hijacked her little private space in our house and uh, she has allowed me to use that for my office uh, for the time being. As far as the timeline, I mean, we have projections and we have uh, models, but that's what they are. And, you know, when you watch the news and somebody says, oh, look at that prediction, it wasn't accurate, or, you know, we don't really know. But I guess what I'm thinking is uh, April's going to be a long month and we should be prepared to stay pretty well isolated through the month of April. And even if some uh, businesses or places open back up, we still need to be very vigilant going on for, for months, for months, really. So even if we start getting out more and doing more, we still have to practice social distancing and hygiene, really, for probably for months. Yes, like based on the timeline of China, some say that life is starting to return to normal over there. And of course, we have uh, some advances that they didn't have to their benefit, uh, you know, as far as just the things that we're working on, like uh, closer to a vaccine. Uh, uh, maybe there's some studies that are coming to us, whether or not certain treatment, treatments have been effective. Um, any thoughts on uh, like, you know, we kind of have a uh, somewhat of a return to normal and then we have like a, a real return to normal right like you know just yeah. whatever that new normal is uh, you know would you predict there, that, uh, you know any prediction there, there is going to be there is going to be a new normal things things are not going to be the same in some ways I think things are going to be better um, I think we've this has this has brought out the best in a lot of people yes it has. and uh, so in, in some ways I think we'll we'll be maybe a uh, more considerate, kinder, gentler society is what is what I think we're going to see from a lot of people. So awesome. that's a that's a very good thing. Um, I, the timeline, I mean, who knows? Who knows? That's right. Yeah. Well, I don't expect you to have a crystal ball or anything like that, but uh, I really appreciate your time. Uh, anything else you'd like to share with the uh, community uh, before we uh, get out? Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I really want to say thank you to you and Cindy and all the coaches. I mean, I really, I talked earlier about how uh, diet, exercise, and sleep are really the, the best things that most of us can do to stay safe and boost our immune systems. And you have helped so many people in the community to get in better shape than they've been in in years. And you, you, you give dietary advice and, and we, have, we have made new friends and we can continue to work out and stay in touch with each other virtually. And we can use the on-demand workouts at any time. Or if you really wanna feel like you're participating, you can jump into a live Zoom visit and the schedule's posted. So yeah, I wanna, I wanna really thank you for all that you've done to create that and, and keep us connected. And you know, this, this is probably the toughest thing that most of us have ever been through in our lives. But at this, you know, I really think it's time to think about what do we have to be grateful for? I mean, you know, um, every day try to think about something you're grateful for. And if you see someone that is doing a good deed, uh, express your gratitude to them. If you, if you get the opportunity to help someone out, please do. But you know, don't forget to stay safe, social distancing, hand hygiene, all that. It's a, it's a great time to use all this technology to stay in touch with your family and friends. And you can, even though your, your church services have been canceled, most of the congregations are having live streaming. So you can, you can connect with your church family with live streaming. And, you know, we're, like I said, we're going to get through this and hopefully we'll be better and stronger as a result. And I, I saw a a post a couple days ago and it, it said uh, remember you're not stuck at home you're safe at home mm, so cool. so uh, just just put things in perspective and be thankful for what you have well thank you for your kind words about journey uh, you know you've been a, a great supporter since the beginning and you're just an awesome part of our community thank you for how on a regular basis you just give of your time to to our members and the community and uh 
I, I do believe that this is making us better. There are things that we just didn't have at Journey before that we're now able to do for people. <laughs> Cindy and I are doing live cooking shows and trivia and, you know, we have those virtual workouts and we're staying Journey strong. And, and thank you for giving us the uh, information that we need to stay Journey strong. And I think you have some great advice there. Cindy and I finished our sessions today and, uh, and you know, we stayed um, socially distant, yet at the same time, we put our focus on somebody else. There was somebody in our community that had a loss and that they needed us. And so, uh, you know, we were able to, uh, you know, pick up a card and, you know, drop it off and, uh, you know, just, you know, then that way they know. And I think that's really important that we put our focus just beyond ourselves. If you find yourself stressed or depressed or anxious, just look outside yourself and say, you know, maybe I can just send somebody like a positive message and then you'll feel positive, right? Or, or a comforting message and then you feel comforted. You, you just can't help somebody else without helping yourself. And that's one of the uh, true joys in what we both do. So, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you for your time today. Really appreciate you. Thank you.